There we are. Great. Um, I actually took a few minutes today to put up my wall hanging. So it's imperfect and that's me <laughs> and I'm um, really okay with that. But this is my tree of life wall hanging and it was something that I wanted to do as I'm thinking about creating a space for myself, um, a space that I want to share. And this tree of life wall hanging is also a little bit symbolic of my own life journey in that I bought it in Vancouver. For those of you who know Ruck Beach, I bought it on Ruck Beach. It's a famous beach in Vancouver. Um, it traveled with me to Australia and then it's come with me to Georgia. And so it um, has been with me through some of the um, big milestones in my life and I have had it kind of squished into a box for a really long time. So I'm enjoying having that up. So that's what you can see behind me. That's why we don't have a bare wall anymore. And I want you to take a moment to look around your space and just notice what's here. And can you get out of the mindset of labeling or categorizing or judging, can you look at something and just see it as a shape? What are its colors? How does it interact with the light? What textures are there? And as you're looking around this space, do you notice that you were breathing or do you notice that you were holding your breath? Can you allow yourself to breathe? Not in any specific way. Your body knows what to do. As you look into the space and just notice what's here without judging or labeling or categorizing. And is your tongue glued to the roof of your mouth? Can you let your tongue relax? Can you let your jaw relax? And now can you take that same quality of awareness that you've been using just to look around your physical surroundings and bring that into your uh, awareness of your own body, of your own sensations. You can have your eyes opened or closed, but just noticing what sensations you feel. Hmm. As you also allow yourself to breathe, as you also allow your tongue to soften. As you also allow your jaw just to, to release a little, allowing there to be some space between your molars. Let that go in three, two, one, come back. So that's just where we're going to start is by coming to the space, the physical space around us, and then also just noting what's present in our own uh, body space, our own somatic space. So I wanted to share a book that I really appreciate and I 
have to admit, I don't read it. I've never read it cover to cover. I pick it up. I tend to turn to the day because it's um, spaced out to, to have a little write-up about each day. But I've never sat down for an entire year and worked through it. Um, and in fact, I was looking at today's entry and then I really liked tomorrow's entry. So I'm going to talk on this because it's exactly where I wanted uh, the theme of today to be. And it's called feeling your feelings. And some of us may not want to feel our feelings right now and that's also okay. But it's also all right to take a nibble. Um, this is a book called The Book of Awakening and it's by Mark, and I'm sorry, N-E-P-O. So I'm not sure if it's Nepo or Nepo. Um, but the idea on this day for March 26, the entry, is about how we often don't feel our feelings. We use language or we use addiction or, I mean, you know, sometimes I'll go for a run and I'm processing, but other times I'll, I'll go and, and do some exercise so I don't have to feel what I'm feeling. And of course, um, when we don't feel our feelings, they get stuck. And so actually being able to sit with, to sit with discomfort, and I don't necessarily mean physical discomfort, but maybe, oh, that, that didn't, I don't know how I feel about that. To soften around that and just sit with it. It's not a question you have to answer, but it's something you can acknowledge. Actually will enable that feeling to be processed and for you to let it go. Um, so what I want to um, suggest is a meditation in this moment um, that I really love called the sky meditation. And before we get into it, I'd like to suggest that we move our bodies. Um, I feel like we get very disembodied or we get very still. And especially in this time, um, some of us may be in freeze. And so there's value to moving the body a little bit just to re-engage that I have these hands and I have these legs and I have this spine and I can move and I can uh, move away if I'm under threat or I can move towards something that is good is a way of helping to build security in the body. Um, so I'm going to ask for you to start moving. You can sit, you can stay seated. Maybe you're sitting on a chair or you're sitting on the floor or you're sitting on a Zafu, a meditation cushion. But even in sitting, I want you to still be moving. And of course, also as you're moving, you're pumping blood through your body. You're helping your um, blood return to your heart. You're um, removing toxins and waste products from your muscles and you're um, helping your joints as you're pumping fluid, synovial fluid through your synovial joints. You're helping to kind of oil up your joints. If you think of like a car that you leave still um, and don't drive it for a year in a garage, it, you know, a car is made to uh, be moving and the engine is made to be running and all of those parts need to um, have action. And of course, as human beings, we, um, we're always walking and always moving and of course with our daily lives now we tend to be very stationary So I've been really moving my shoulders and my arms. I'm going to take a moment just to explore my head and Noticing the actions that are available for me in my neck. There may be some places. I'm noticing a little tension and that's okay But maybe I can work a little bit of it out and Breathe as you move And now I'm going to think about my legs. So I'm going to explore moving my legs and get a little playful. And I'm going to move my knees and my hips. And I'm going to flutter kick. And then let them go. And just notice now what I feel in my body. So... I'm now building a bit of a story, right? So on Monday, I talked about playfulness. And on Tuesday, I talked about curiosity. And so today I want to add 
um, gratitude. These are things that can help us in times of stress, of anxiety, that if you are feeling overwhelmed or you're feeling sort of stuck, you might be feeling stuck in your house, that in these times we can find playfulness, curiosity, and gratitude. So in this moment, I want you to find your seat and I want you to find something that you're grateful for as you breathe. It might be the sunshine today. It might be a loved one. It could be for the internet that we have this platform and this equipment and this ability to connect even over a distance. And is there a place in your body that you feel that gratitude? And bring a hand to that place now. It could be your heart, but it could be something else. And can you feel the weight of that touch? Maybe there's some warmth there. And then if that gratitude lives in another part of your body or there's another part of your body that would like some touch, then bring that touch there. And you can stay with that touch, or if you'd like, you can bring your hands to your knees. Don't feel that you have to sit in a certain way, just sit easy. You can even um, find a little movement side to side until you find that that movement gets a little smaller and a little smaller and a little smaller oh, until it feels like you land. And I want you to put, put that thing that you feel gratitude for, give it an image and put that image in your pelvis. And is there a color that you associate with that thing that you're grateful for? And fill your pelvis with a paint that has this color. And I want you to gently open your eyes and look around the room and breathe that color out on an H breath into the room. coming to the meditation part of this session and I want you to take a moment just to notice what is present for you what is your emotional flavor in this moment And I want you to imagine that you're lying down on a grassy hill or a beach or your back deck or somewhere else that could be from a memory or your imagination. You're lying down and you're looking at the sky.
And whatever you feel inside of yourself, whatever emotional quality is there, you're going to look over at another place in the sky and that emotional quality is reflected in the weather. It could be sunny. It could be thunder and lightning. It could be snow. But it's over there. It's not on you. And then I want you to look over in the opposite direction, still looking at the sky, and notice that there's an entirely different kind of weather over there. What do you see? As you are lying in this safe place. And then pick another place in the sky off into the distance and notice what weather is over there. And breathe as you look at this weather. It can't touch you, but you can see it. You can notice the quality of the light over there, the temperature but it's not here over you. And finally, pick a fourth place in the sky to look at, distant from where you are. Notice the weather over there. Let yourself breathe, let your jaw go. And then take a moment to look at all of these different points of weather. Look at how different they are, and yet they're all encapsulated in the same sky. And let that go in three, two, one. Let the light come back into your eyes gently. Hello. So I know that, hey Michael, I know that um, sometimes in times, especially of stress, but even the positive emotions, they can feel really, really big. And I love the sky meditation because it reminds me that I hold many emotions and many experiences and many kinds of weather inside of me. And I'm not just one thing. And that doesn't mean that I then have to live out that one emotion for days and weeks and months and years. That emotions move like clouds on a windy day. And also, as actors, this is valuable to remember because our characters rarely feel one emotion. They usually feel layers of emotions and complexities, right? In my daily life, I can be grieving about the loss of work but I can also be, oh, I'm out in a park in the sunshine. And in this moment, I feel joy. And I can feel, I don't have to feel guilty about that moment of joy. Other way around, I can say I've had a really great day outside. I spent a lot of the day outdoors and doing errands and feeling um, outwardly productive. And I felt a little guilt because I have other productive things that I need to do. Um, but I also felt joy that I was um, out and trying to maintain social distance and trying to remind people to be socially distant, um, but also getting out of the house for a little bit. So my point being that in times of stress and overwhelm, it's even more important to come back to your body. It's even more important to notice your breath. And it's even more important to um, use images to remind yourself that you are vast you are the sky, you are not your weather. And that um, it is possible to experience something fully, like the thunderstorm that went on yesterday, but also that that weather shifts and changes and nothing is forever. 
And if um, the last few weeks have shown us nothing, is that things can change very quickly. That may feel threatening because that change, that sudden change was um, a negative one perhaps, but also sudden changes can be immensely positive as well. So a reminder today is to allow yourself to feel what you're feeling, but also remember that you are the sky and you hold vast um, ranges of feeling. Um, I'm going to, I believe, next tomorrow, I'm going to do a little bit of tapping. So I have a whole range of training. I'm a Reiki healer as well as a voice uh, teacher and movement teacher and acting teacher. Um, but I also uh, teach a little bit of tapping. Um, some of you might know it as EFT or emotional freedom technique. And so I'm going to um, incorporate that into tomorrow. So I hope to see you guys tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. <sighs> Honor what you're feeling. Feel your feelings. Keep moving your body. Keep breathing. Love each other. Take care of each other. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.